What's up YouTube? This is Phil from Phil Parisi Code. Today we're looking at for loops in MATLAB. There are two main reasons you want to use for loops. The first is to gain access to the indices of a matrix to do further math. And the second is to run simulations in MATLAB. Today we're looking at the very basics. Let's check out the code to get started. Your syntax is pretty straightforward. You're going to start by calling for and then define an index, which we typically use i, or j, or k, or any other word you want, but i is the standard. And then you want to call how many times you're going to do the loop. Here we're doing 1 through 5, which means we're going to do this 5 times, with i changing values from 1 to 5 throughout. You're going to finish the syntax with an end command, and you're sandwiching what actions you want to perform in the middle. So it's a for loop sandwich, all right? Your for command, which tells you how many times the loop, your end, which finishes the loop, and the content in the middle, which actually does something that you tell it to do. In this basic example, in the first loop, we start out with i equals one, and we perform the actions. The first thing we do is we're just calling i, which outputs whatever the value of i is, in this case, one, to our command window. The second command, display, We'll simply display the text that we have there next loop. If we go ahead and run this, we'll see it runs five times because we've got i is one to five. Going through logically, i equals one. So we output one, which is what we see here. And then we display next loop, which is what we're seeing below. So what I've highlighted right now in the command window is just what we performed in the first iteration. Now, after it gets to the end of the commands that we have, we go back to the top, and i becomes 2. Okay, we go by one value integer increments till we get to 5. Now i equals 2. What happens in the second iteration? We display i again, and we display next loop, and so forth for 3 and 4 and 5. Next example. Let's say we've got a matrix or an array, same thing here, called cracks, with five values in cracks, okay? We want to display the elements in this matrix. As we go then, we're calling one to five again for i, and we're going to use i as an index, right? MATLAB has certain, oh, let's get that off the screen here. MATLAB has a way of calling the elements in a matrix or an array by using indices. So when we call cracks, parentheses i, we're calling the ith element of that matrix or array. So when i equals 1 in the first loop, we're calling cracks 1. When i equals 2 in the second loop, we're calling cracks 2. And that gives us the element output as we go along. If we run this, there it's answer, because we don't have a value we're storing it in, so it uses the default answer. And it's going through and displaying 2, and then 4, and 1, and 0, and 2, which are the corresponding elements as we go through the cracks variable. Next example, we've got cracks again, nothing's changed here. We want to sum the elements in the cracks. Of course, we could just call sum of cracks, and we get 9. So we know the answer should be 9 here, but let's do it with a for loop. We're once again going from elements 1 to 5. We've got cracks i just outputting to make sure we're logically following along the loop. And now we're going to call and store the values in a new variable called sum cracks. Okay, sum cracks will be our cumulative counting of the cracks every loop as we go along. Stay with me. In this sum cracks, we're going to call cracks i, which calls that ith element of cracks. Okay, we've got this value, and we want to add on to it some cracks, okay? That value will be what we've got. It serves as the previous sum and cumulative value, some cracks. We'll walk through it step by step here. i equals 1. Cracks of i is going to be 2. That's our first element in cracks. Now we're calling some cracks equals, okay, cracks i, that's 2, and we're adding some cracks, which would be the previous element. To start off, we have to do zero because we have no cumulative cracks at this time. To do that, make sure we call some cracks equals zero. We have to define anything we're using in the for loop before the for loop. 
the sum cracks to start will be zero. Let's run this. Go to the top here. So we start off, yep, this is looking good. Sum cracks is two. Next loop, i now equals two, okay? Cracks, i is now cracks of two, which is the second element of cracks, that's four. And we're adding sum cracks. Well, what is sum cracks at this time in the loop? Well, the last value we stored as sum cracks was a value of two. So now we're adding four and two, and that gives us a new sum cracks value of six. And here we get sum cracks of six. We keep going along for the rest of it, and we end up with sum cracks is nine, which is the same as what we looked at before if we just used the sum command on cracks. That ends our first video of for loops. Check out the next to learn more.